Hello guys and welcome back to another build guide video for Neo 2. This video was actually planned for a little later on but due to it being highly requested I decided to drop the video I was working on to get this one done and it's the Neo 2 updated version of my Immortal Swordsman build. Now of course we're only in New Game Plus and due to the changes made in Neo 2 the build is a little bit different to the original, weaker in some places but stronger in others and I fully expect with the DLC we will be able to improve this build even further so I imagine you'll be seeing an Immortal Swordsman 3.0 in the near future. This build is designed to have a very big emphasis on swordplay, no cheesy one shot or range spam with this one, just like in Neo 1, I wasn't really a fan of the one shot living weapon builds, so this build is very tanky but also very agile, whilst having consistent damage output, and due to the way the defensive procs work, it encourages you to be very aggressive and on the front foot. However, it is an end game, new game plus build, meaning you'll want to be around level 200 to see the full benefits. You can run this build early, but you will encounter a couple of issues, the first issue being that because it's a heavy armor build in order to reach B agility rating you're going to need to dump a huge amount of points into stamina and strength and then you need to of course max out your skill stat for damage on dual swords in this case being skill. You're not going to have enough points to do that until you're around 200 and until then you're going to want to prioritize the skill stat so you can always work with a C agility rating until then because the weapon skills that I do use on dual swords are very mobile to begin with. Unlike the Neo 1 Immortal Swordsman build which mostly focused on high stance spam with Windstorm, this one focuses much more on low stance attacks and active skill combos. You can still play this build like the old one if you prefer however I feel my skill has improved a lot since then and now I find the idea of spamming windstorm a bit boring so it's actually kind of funny too because this build has such an emphasis on being tanky but with this play style you actually hardly ever get hit to begin with and the other issue you're going to encounter in playing this build too early is you're unlikely to have the Yasakani Magatama accessory which is an item you're guaranteed to get at the end of new game plus and it will reduce your set bonus requirement by one allowing you to receive the benefits of multiple sets at once however once again you can still run this build without it you're just going to have to make do with the single set, in this case being the Tatanashi armor, which is the same set we used for this build in Neo 1. If we quickly just take a look at the stats, there are some differences with the original build in that we still have very high elemental damage mitigation, except instead of it being an OP 100%, it's now 67%, but we have gained a hell of a lot of defense in other places. We have a defense bonus based on the Amrita gauge at a rank of AA minus, minus 35% damage taken mid attack, a huge amount of defense and toughness from our armor, the firm resolve mystic art, which gives gives us a defensive buff whenever we hit an enemy with an attack. We're also using a couple of Omnio magic skills to give further defensive buffs and almost 1000 life. That is a big health pool. We're also running some life regeneration on this build too but it's not a full life regen build which I am working on for my next video. So let's go over the gear you'll be needing before going over the stats you'll be wanting on that gear. We will then go over the weapon skills as well as the other important skills relating to the skill trees. So with your Yasakani Magatama accessory you'll be wanting 4 pieces of Tatanashi armor and 2 pieces of the Onishibata. One of which will be coming in weapon form. In this case my hatchets. The armor piece of the Onishibata can go where you want but I have it on the gloves. For my main weapon I'm using the Ichigo Fury and Oyako Toshiro. Not only is it another set which means using one piece of it will give us a two piece set bonus of life increase but the weapon itself is very interesting because it comes with a dual element of fire and lightning which is something I'll expand upon a little bit later in the video. Another option I'm considering is switching this out for any other dual katana that is part of a set that isn't imbued then temper to imbue it with poison and adjust the build to replace any fire or lightning stats I have with melee damage to poisoned enemies and poison accumulation but I'll elaborate on this when we look at the special effects and stats. For your ranged weapons, they're entirely optional though I like the Tatsuki rifle and cannon because they have speed up modifiers attached to them. So let's take a deeper look at the special effects I've rolled onto my gear. To synergize with the Tatanashi set bonus of reduced elemental damage, we of course want to make sure that we have this rolled on both of our accessories. Now because my weapon has both fire and lightning damage, I've made each charm focus around each sword, one being fire, with fire damage and burn accumulation and the other having lightning damage and shock accumulation. Now obviously if I decide to change my weapon to focus around poison I will also change these to reflect that. I've also taken life increase on both accessories. For the armor we don't have a lot of exciting options other than on the chest and the gloves but going through them on the boots we have faster winded recovery, running speed, dodge key consumption, toughness and an inheritable of defense. For the waist we have tenacity, toughness, defense, key recovery bonus based on the Amrita gauge which is good because we will always have a full Amrita gauge and an inheritable of life increase. For our gloves we have increased attack and defense on dual swords, elixir efficacy 
Legacy, which increases the amount of health restore from elixirs, defense, projectile damage taken, and an inheritable of toughness. Now the chest probably the most exciting piece as it allows us the best rolls. We've got defense bonus based on Amrita Gauge rank A, and the Amrita Gauge should always be full for us. If you don't know, the Amrita Gauge isn't how much Amrita you're carrying or anything like that. It's relevant to how charged your Yokai Shift icon is or the old Spirit Guardian Gauge. We're rarely ever going to be activating our Yokai Shift, and because you can pop Amrita Stones at the start of a mission, you never have a reason not to be at full charge. And at full charge, this ability gives us a huge boost to our defense. These skills stack as well, which is also why we have the double A ranking in our stats. So we have another elemental damage taken reduction roll, life increase, damage taken critical, which is the damage we receive at low health, and an inheritable of toughness. So all in all, the perfect immortal chest piece right here. I'm guessing we'll be able to make the other armor pieces look more interesting once the DLC is released, as well as the other difficulty tiers. For the headpiece then, a booster key, toughness, inheritable of defense, and life increase. For ranged weapons, on the cannon I have untouched ammo, damage bonus based on familiarity, life drain on bullseye, and an inheritable of bullet and arrow key damage. On the rifle, I have untouched ammo, life drain on bullseye, damage bonus to familiarity, and 100% increase to movement speed when aiming a ranged weapon, which is amazing on the rifle. My hatchets have lightning and shock accumulation, as well as an attack bonus to skill, and low attack key consumption. For the main weapon then, we have an inheritable active skill key consumption. This is something I may change, so far I found it necessary due to the amount of skills I'm throwing out whilst playing aggressively. Life drain on melee attack. Now, it's not a huge amount of regen, because we're not stacking life regen skills, but if you're good at hitting and not getting hit for big damage, any chip damage you do take will be healed back up from this special effect. We have attack bonus based on skill and also shock accumulation. The reason I've taken shock accumulation rather than fire accumulation is because I find lightning to be more valuable to the playstyle. Status effect of slowing down an enemy is far more useful than a minor tick damage of a burn debuff which finds greater value when you spec directly for it. That said burn is a nice bonus to the build it's just not something we're going to prioritize. However said earlier I'm still experimenting with different weapon effects as well as poison being another option we could also forego any imbue and focus entirely around raw damage rolling a percent increase to cyanide across or any other flat increase to our damage. So onto our spirit guardian and we're running with Inosaseo for two reasons. It further increases our damage reduction mid attack by 15% and also gives us a defense bonus on our Amrita gauge by a B plus rating. We also have defense bonus on Amrita gauge C on our second spirit guardian which combining with our A rank on gear gives us a total of double A minus. I very rarely use my yokai shift as I can do far more damage with my basic weapon rotation and due to the defense of this build it's not like I ever need to yokai shift as a panic button either. That said, if you ever do end up using your Amrita gauge, you can simply pop one of the large spirit stones to refill it. I suggest carrying this for the beginning of missions anyway to fill the gauge. The Obsidian Samurai is the perfect place to farm infinite amounts of these as it gives you a soul stone every time you defeat him. Now for your soul cores, I'd say they're actually entirely personal preference. I switch them up all the time. For the sake of synergy, Onryoki gives another 10% damage reduction mid attack at rank 9. For my main core, I run Magatsu, which doesn't have that much build synergy, but it increases our skill damage by 2% which is a nice flat increase to our sign of the cross. I also just really love the yokai ability on it. It's one of the most satisfying to end a massive combo with right when you're out of key. Pop this and two arms also wielding dual swords will come out of your shoulders and start flinging a bunch of lightning at the enemy's face. And I also seem to take very little to no damage when I'm in the animation. My third soul core is literally there for the base stat increase as I don't have enough room to fit in a third soul core that has any significance from a build synergy perspective. So let's take a look at the dual sword skill tree. You of course want to have sign of the cross and it's upgrade. If you want to play my playstyle, you will want dual dragon which is what lets you leap behind the enemy by pressing triangle at the end of a combo what i usually do is quick attack into dual dragon and then that presents me an opportunity to sign of the cross now i do have ultimate sign of the cross unlocked which lets you do an additional strike at the end of it it's not essential but if you want to get this it can be obtained by farming tokichiro i got mine to drop by farming tokichiro in the quest called the two faces of hospitality in the twilight region he also has a chance to drop this hidden skill double headed slice which is alright, I mostly use it to help apply element or status as it does a multi hit. But again, these skills aren't essential to the build or the playstyle. As I mentioned earlier, you can always play the OG style, which is to take Windstorm and spam that until you have an opportunity to sign the cross. The Mystic Art you want active is Firm Resolve, as this is one of the key elements to our tankiness. But at some point, you're going to want to pick up the other Mystic Art just so you can progress in the tree to Melee Mastery, which is the continuous upgrade to attack on Jewel Swords. It's not a complete waste as Jewel Swords is one of the lucky weapons where both Mystic Arts are great and useful in the build. In the Samurai Tree, you'll want to pick up Damage Boost Skill and Damage Boost Stamina and apply it to the skills of your choosing. I'd recommend applying the Damage Boost Skill to your Sign of the Cross. In the Shifting Tree, my favourite upgrade is Leechkin, 
chills you for 6% on yokai ability hit when you're fully upgraded. Another favourite is Raging Strike, but you should only use this if you really know what you're doing as it will drain your life massively on use with the reward of 27% increased damage. Sometimes I put this on my sign of the cross but on a different stance, so on low stance sign of the cross I'll have damage boost skill but if I know I can survive the life drain I'll switch to high stance sign of the cross and spam this for mega damage. We're also using some Omeo magic, we've got protection talismans here for further tankiness alongside life leech talismans that will heal us when we attack. To carry this stuff we also have like 11 points in magic which we'll talk about shortly but I also have this upgrade in the tree down here that increases magic capacity by 5. In ninjutsu we're running with quick change scrolls, we also have the ninjutsu capacity increase but before we get into the core stats I quickly want to mention something in regards to remodeling. So every weapon, piece of armor and your accessories can be remodeled. You can remodel your weapons to change their primary stat scaling which doesn't really apply here but with the armor and accessories you want to pick refine. This is because when trying to reach B agility rating on heavy armor we would become too heavy to do so by picking reinforce. If you play a build that uses strength as its main scaling stat you're fine to do this because the combination of max strength and stamina allows you to reach B agility rating even in heavy armor but because we're using skill as our main weapon scaling stat we already have to near max out stamina then put some points into strength and then max out our skill stat it's just not possible to do efficiently especially for the marginal defense increase it gives so pick refine this will increase the core stat requirements on the armor but it's fine because we're going to be putting that many points into the required core stats anyway and with that we will look at the core stats so because of the heavy armor and wanting to hit the agility you'll need about 92 points in stamina and about 20 points in strength if you look at the current encumbrance i'm at exactly 70 percent which is a b agility rating as evident by the green color if we were one point over it would be 70 percent point one and turn yellow giving us c agility rating so tweak this yourself until you see that 70 percent or under the reason we're not 99 in stamina is because different stats will give you different increases at different times think of it like diminishing returns the higher you go in a stat the less you're going to start to get and if you move over to a different stat in this case strength it would give a larger increase than the diminishing stamina stat tldr you want about 92 stamina and 20 strength you of course max out skill which benefits your hatchets as well by the way and then we raise whatever else gives us the largest boost per point to our jewel swords most of the time this will be heart which works out great as heart is a great stat due to the increase to key it gives as mentioned before i have 12 points in magic i'd recommend 11 if you want to carry two defense talismans and three life leech you can put less if you don't feel like carrying that many or even not carrying any at all same reason i have 10 points in decks so i can carry three quick change scrolls finally one of the most important parts of the build is the clan house house todo which gives us a life bonus based on our stamina and a damage boost based on our equipment weight we have our stamina almost maxed out which is why we have almost 1000 life because the huge boost we're getting from this clan bonus we're getting the near maximum damage boost we can obtain due to wearing heavy armor the only way we could truly maximize it is if we remodeled all our equipment to increase their weight but as mentioned earlier we could only do that if we were playing a strength build and i think that's pretty much it guys if i've forgotten anything or there's anything i didn't explain please ask in the comment section and i'll do my best to reply to you we've got plenty more builds in the works so stay tuned for those and if there's anything in particular that you want to see go ahead and suggest it down in the comments i'm also streaming on twitch and posting regularly over on instagram if you want to see more just search xenoswarm on the relevant platforms but links can also be found in the description if you like this video hit the thumbs up as that really helps me out and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more neo2 content coming soon okay guys take care